Hello everyone, I am Mrs. Rikta Das, PGT Chemistry from Kendri Vidyalaya, Army area. As we started with organic reactions, in the organic chemistry, I have already completed, I have already completed part 1 where I taught you the IPC nomenclature. In part 2, I started with the organic reaction where I started with that addition reactions. I did yesterday um, the oxidation, the reduction. I am now coming to the part 4. Here I am going to conclude also the organic chemistry, the important points. I have already completed in the organic reactions, addition reactions, elimination reactions, dehydration, ozonolysis, oxidation, reduction. Now let me start with one more time, hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. Hydrolysis means reaction either with water in presence of an acid, acid hydrolysis or in presence of a base, basic hydrolysis. Sometimes the hydrolysis is also done specifying as NaOH, now hydrolysis. If I take a cyanide and the hydrolysis if it is done, I am writing here as H3O positive. I can either write as H3O positive or I can also write as H2O this way. Just combine the three hydrogens, so H3O and this positive charge goes here. <coughs> Any cyanide undergoes hydrolysis to give rise to an amide. How this is taking place? CH3 to the carbon and this nitrogen to the carbon, the oxygen comes and to the nitrogen, hydrogen comes and thus you can see this is H2O and I am getting here an amide. I start with the cyanide, I am getting here an amide. The amide on further hydrolysis gives, here the cleavage, this bond undergoes cleavage, here the hydrogen, here the OH part. So this comes out to be CH3, C double bond O, OH and ammonia is coming out as a byproduct. Ultimately, you see that wherever the cyanide group is there, that place only turns out to be a carboxylic acid. You may come across some places. What happens? A cyanide undergoes partial hydrolysis. If it is partial hydrolysis, then you are supposed to stop here, amide. You will come across one of the question in the amines, completion of the reaction, where it is specified over the top of arrow mark, partial hydrolysis. At that time, you must remember, do not land up till carboxylic acid, stop here in amides. The same cyanide, when it undergoes basic hydrolysis, this will also give an amide and after that, rather than giving a carboxylic acid, this is going to give a salt of carboxylic acid. I am writing it like this, salt of carboxylic acid. This part you should be very, very careful. If in the question paper, they would have specified uh, the base as NaOH, then you must write down here as Na. If they are specifying the base as KOH, then write down this part as K. Here I am writing this part a carboxylate ion. I am taking one more. What will happen if I take an isocyanide? I am taking an isocyanide. Isocyanide either undergoes acid hydrolysis or it undergoes basic hydrolysis will always give rise to now here, it reacts with two molecules of water. I am putting one H here and an OH here, H here and an OH here. I am taking two water molecules and thus you see that you get a CH3NH2, CH3NH2 plus if I combine all of them, all of them means OH here, this OH and this carbon atom, I am going to get formic acid. This part you should always remember, any isocyanide. Any isocyanide undergoes acid hydrolysis will always give this carbon atom as a formic acid. Then uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let me just list down some more reaction. If I take an ester on acid hydrolysis, generally any derivative of carboxylic acid gives a carboxylic acid. Here this bond undergoes cleavage, so H this side, so I get C2H5OH. OH this side, so I get CH3COH and hence I am getting acetic acid plus 
C 2 H 5 O H. If I take an acid chloride, it gives under acid hydrolysis one second like this, O H this side, H that side. So, I get the byproduct as H C and one second and carboxylic acid. In general, I want to say that any cyanide undergoes acid hydrolysis to give rise to a carboxylic acid. Any isocyanide undergoes acid hydrolysis to give rise to a 1 degree amine. When I say 1 degree amine, I mean a primary amine. And always formic acid is one of the byproduct. Cyanide undergoes basic hydrolysis to give a salt of carboxylic acid, which can be called as carboxylate ion. I hope these reactions are clear things undergoing hydrolysis. After hydrolysis, now let me go to another, another type of reaction that is substitution reaction. Many substitution reactions you have already studied in class 11. I am just giving some of the examples. If I take any alcohol, I am just writing it like this. I am not writing the entire reaction. Now, I have written here C S 3 C H 2 O H. Now, if I treat this one with P C L 3 or P C L 5 or thionyl chloride or Lucas reagent, Lucas reagent, this is anhydrous zinc chloride and H C L. Now, all these are going to give me the halide. The O H part is going to get substituted with the chloride here. I'm not, I have not written the byproduct. Similarly, if I want a bromo part that is CH3, CH2 Br, then I have to either go for PBr3, I can go for HBr reflux a type of distillation. I can even take NEBr in presence of H2SO4, I am going to get this. And if I want an iodo derivative, that is, if I want an ethyl iodide, I will go for I2, that is PI3, I2 in presence of red phosphorus. I hope it is clear. Here you just see that I have just substituted, I have just replaced OH with this part Cl here. So, to replace or to remove the OH part and to introduce the Cl, any one of the reagent I can use. Now, another thing you must remember among all of them, if I want to go for chloride, I am telling this is preferred. One of the reasoning type of question is why thionyl chloride is preferred for the preparation of alkyl halide. Now, in this case, just say here if alcohol, this is the alcohol ROH, I am taking this as the alcohol. When the alcohol reacts with thionyl chloride, these are the bonds which undergoes cleavage. And SOCl2 get split up like this SO here I am writing Cl this side and the Cl this side. Now, if I take the compound this part this RCl is nothing but the alkyl halide the main product what I have written it here this part SO2 as one of the byproduct SO2 as one of the byproduct HCl as another byproduct. I am telling both of them are in the gaseous state. So, it easily escapes out leaving behind the product. In case if this is the reasoning a question asked, you should be able to write down. Now, I am going to write down some more uh, substitution reaction. Just look here. I am taking now compound CH3, CH2, Cl. I have taken an alkyl halide. Prior to this, I have taken an alcohol. Now, I am taking an alkyl halide. Now, if this reacts with now, before starting this, I want to tell you in the 11th standard, you have studied nucleophiles and electrophiles. Nucleophiles are negatively charged species. For example, C n minus, they are electron rich species. I am writing it here, H 2 O. I am showing you that extra electrons, the lone pairs of electrons. They are negatively charged, they are electron rich, they are Lewis bases. Lewis bases, why? Because they have a tendency to donate the electrons. Now, so if a reaction is with the nucleophile, then such type of reactions are called as nucleophilic substitution reaction. As you studied in class 11th, I will be doing some more reaction now. Similarly, thus the opposite of that, electrophiles are just the opposite of that. If nucleophile is negatively charged and electrophile 
an electrophile will be positively charged. I am taking this as one of the example, NO2 positive. I hope you remember what is NO2 positive called as? It is nitronium ion. They are uh, electron deficient. I am taking one of the example as BF3. They are Lewis acids. These are Lewis base. These are Lewis acid. I have written the short form. I hope you will be able to make out. Now, here are some of the reactions I am going to write here. I have taken CS3CH2Cl as the main reactant. Now, if I react this one with aqueous NaOH, let me just list down the reagents. You will be able to make out now. I am taking NaCN or KCN. Now, let me take AgCN. I am taking NaNO2 or KNO2, I am taking AgNO2, I am taking another compound CH3, <coughs> CH2, ONA. Sodium ethoxide, sodium alkoxide, I have written here certain things. I want you to find out what is the product. I am telling all this I am teaching you under substitution reaction. So, what part is getting substituted? What part? It is the Cl group which is getting substituted. Now, whenever you write anything in organic chemistry, whatever reagent, whatever organic compound, see to that you write this part just the opposite. So, then you can take out the byproduct combined. Now, in this case, now in this case, this is not an others are the inorganic species. So, in this case, you can easily make out what will the byproduct? Any Cl with the byproduct. So, what is left is OH. Just attach OH here. So, this part comes out to be CH3CH2OH one of the preparation of alcohols. In this case, I get here as CH3, CH2, CN. Cyanides, cyanides are also called as the nitriles. But the moment I take this part as AgCN, I am getting CH3, CH2, NC. An important question that why when silver cyanide reacts with alkyl halide gives an isocyanide, whereas NCN or KCN gives a cyanide, that is the nitrile. Remember, these are ionic compound. This is not so ionic compound. This is a covalent compound and hence in this case isocyanate becomes the nucleophile. But in this case, you get the compound here as CH3, CH2, ONO. I hope you remember what is ONO. ONO is nitrite. But the moment I write here as AgNO2, you get this part as the nitro group. Try this one. This is the reactant. Take like this opposite. Are you able to make out what is the byproduct? This Cl and this Na. Combine it. And in this case, the byproduct is NaCl. So, what else is left here? So, this is CH3, CH2, CH3, CH2. Now, start writing from this side O, CH2, CH3. Are you able to make out what is the function group I have put in that compound? Oxygen attached either side with the carbon atom, these are ethers. I am telling the last reaction, what I have written, it is a naming reaction. This is nothing but Williamson synthesis reaction. By this reaction, one can prepare ethers. So, when this is asked in the examination, how do you write? We write, when an alkyl halide reacts with sodium alkoxide, ethers are formed. I hope it is clear to you. The substitution reaction, write it and whatever the nucleophiles you can see, just attach, find, remove the byproduct and you can immediately get the compound. From all this compound, I hope you are able to make out what are the functional, uh, ambient functional groups. Cyanide, isocyanide, nitrite, this one is nitrite, this one is nitro group. Now, in continuation with the substitution reaction, I have listed here a chart having a benzene what you have studied in class 11th towards the end under the properties of hydrocarbons you have studied all this reaction. Let me just revise this and then start with <coughs> the 12th standard substitution reaction. Benzene undergoes chlorination and you get chlorobenzene. So, this process is called as halogenation. If you want a bromobenzene you just put a Br2 and here Fe Br3. 
Now this process, nitric acid, it is going to generate NO2. These are all examples of electrophilic substitution. See, nitric acid. We know that nitric acid, if I have to show the dissociation of nitric acid, I generally write it like this, H positive plus NO3 minus. See here, it is not 3, this is 2 here. That means this is not going to dissociate like this. Apart from that, I am telling this is an example of an electrophilic substitution reaction. So, something positively charged has to be generated. This is a negatively charged and this and thus we see that in this reaction, nitric acid is not generated is not generating the NO3 this way. Now, nitric acid, I can write it like this, O here and uh, like this. This is going to dissociate this way, OH negative and NO2 positive. Now, you can see here NO2 and it is having a positive charge. This is what is called as nitronium ion. In many reactions, we are going to use this reaction uh, electrophile. I hope it is clear and never get confused that nitric acid is always getting dissociated this way. In organic, since I have to show that how the electrophile is generated, this is how this is generated. I hope it is clear. <coughs> now, this, since the nitro group is getting attached, I call this process as nitration. This is halogenation, this one is nitration. Sulfuric acid, this one is benzene sulfonic acid and hence the name of the process is sulfonation. Now, the ring is reacting with both concentrated nitric acid as well as sulfuric acid, but I do not get here the sulfonic part. You see it is only the NO2 part. Where is the sulfonic part has gone? Sulfuric acid as you studied in class 11, sulfuric acid is helping in generating the nitronium ion. Here it is, this part is called as nitrating mixture. You may come across some question, what happens when phenol reacts with nitrating mixture? Nitrating mixture means it is a mixture of concentrated nitric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid. The last two reaction, do you remember this? The last two reactions are naming reaction. In this case, one of the hydrogen reacts with this, one of the hydrogen is getting substituted with the Cl part. So, HCl is coming out as a byproduct. The CH3 part directly get attached to the ring. In any reaction, when something is getting attached to the ring directly, generally we use anhydrous aluminum chloride. Here also you can see the H and the Cl part comes out. So, this part, the acyl group comes and gets attached to the ring, giving rise to acetophenone. Here it is uh, the introduction of alkyl.